Are the glory days of Kathy Woods and growth stocks behind us? That's the ultimate question that every growth investor is asking. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about Kathy Woods' portfolio performance in 2021 versus 2020. And then also some names that I think are actually closer to fair value now than they were at the beginning of the year. So Kathy Woods and ARK Invest are definitely feeling the heat this year, being down around 10% year to date. Compare that to the S&P 500 or ticker symbol SPY, and year to date performance is around 11.44%. People are kind of jumping on this whole theme of growth is dead, Kathy Woods is a terrible fund manager, but if you kind of zoom out, you gotta give her the benefit of the doubt because 2020, she made some serious money for her investors. If you look at the beginning of January 2020, the stock was trading at 51.80, and at the beginning of the year, it was trading at $137. So over 100% for an ETF, which is actually just mind boggling uh, because if you think about it, that's over 100% across a basket of stocks. What did help though was Tesla was around 10% of the fund and the year of 2020 was definitely the year of Tesla stock and it going to the absolute moon. And as of 5.7, here are the lists of different companies that are in the fund. There's 57 in total, but you can see Tesla is still around 11%, followed by big holdings in Teladoc, Roku, Square, Shopify, Spotify, a lot of big tech growth companies. But seriously, Kathy, is it over? Can we can we buy growth stocks again? Because even though the fund itself has underperformed versus the S&P 500, Kathy Wood and ARK Invest are continuing to buy into these growth names such as Coinbase, Palantir, and others. So we'll see over time if this will continue to pan out. Because if you look at the five year, you know there was years where this fund kind of consolidated and then it had a year of explosion. So the question is, will it have that consolidation to the side for years to come or will it continue to explode to the upside in 2020 a lot of these tech companies or growth companies had amazing years in terms of revenue growth and really that's what everyone was looking at it was all about okay covid is shutting down the economy all of these companies are transforming digitally and no other than kathy woods is picking up all these tech companies and the growth is just insane now the valuations definitely got ahead of the actual revenue growth. And you can see that in companies like Palantir. Something similar happened to a lot of different companies, but I can use Palantir as kind of the poster child of what happened in 2020 and what's happening in 2021. At the end of 2020, this stock exploded the upside and there was euphoria around this company becoming the next Apple, the next Google. And yes, this company is great. It's an AI, uh, big data, cybersecurity. It is a good company and in a good macro space for the long term. But that's where kind of people forget about the whole valuation thing. And if the company is growing, that's great. But if it's already priced into the stock itself and the market cap, it becomes harder to make money from buying that stock. Here's a year to date chart for price to sales ratio for Palantir. At the beginning of the year, it was trading at 25. And in February, just a month later, and nothing really changing too much about the company, was trading up in the 40s. So the valuation definitely got a little ahead of itself in February. And now that it's coming back down, I'm looking at a price to sales ratio of around 20, which gives you around a 16 to $17 price target. Now, if you're asking yourself, my guy, why are you just beating up on Palantir? I'm not, it's a great company. And a lot of these growth names that have been beaten up are great companies. At the right price, Palantir is a great long-term buy. It's a great space that the company's in and it is growing. What happens though is people get lost in the FOMO and myself, right? I bought at 27 a little bit, like $165, a very, very small percentage of my portfolio because realistically what could happen also is a stock can stay elevated and the valuation and earnings catches up to the stock price. So the stock trades sideways and those earnings kind of catch up with the valuation that can happen at the same time. So the takeaway really is this pullback could be good for long-term investors in these growth companies because as the growth of the revenue and earnings actually happens over time, the valuation now should follow instead of already being built into the stock itself. And there's two companies I've already made videos about or I've talked about, Fastly and Teladoc. Let's look at those and see kind of what I think fair value for those companies are now that the premium has kind of been sucked out of those companies. Currently Fastly is trading around $43 and they got absolutely slammed after their last earnings. Realistically, their second quarter guidance was a little light, but their full year guidance is still good and it's still a growing company in edge computing. 
Now, for 2020, there was a lot of premium built into this thing, and it was trading at a price to sales ratio of over 30. That's why I wasn't really going heavy into it. I nibbled a little bit at the 70 level back here, and now that it's at 43, it's starting to become interesting again. At a 30% growth rate in terms of revenue for the next five years, and a reasonable price to sales ratio of around 12, with projected revenue at the end of 2021 of 400 million, you're talking about a fair value according to the price to sales ratio of around 4.8. That gives a value per share that's relatively fair value around the $41 level. If you look at Teladoc, it's come down to 152 and the price to sales ratio around 12.66 versus a much higher historical price to sales ratio. Also, Teladoc's expected revenue growth is around 38% for the next five years. So that gives a reasonable price to sales ratio of around 15, with a projected revenue of $2 billion at the end of 2021. That's around a 30 billion market cap or kind of a fair value of around $196 at the end of 2021. Now, does this mean I'm going all in on growth stocks? No, I always have a mixture of growth and value. That way I can kind of go between the two whenever I see an opportunity. So when growth is getting absolutely killed and it's getting close to the fair value, I may pick up some investments that I think are more moonshots and can catapult a lot of growth in the portfolio. Whereas when growth stocks are really highly valued and there's a lot of premium, then I tend to skew towards value stocks that may not have as much upside potential but they don't have as much downside risk. So are growth stocks dead? No, you just have to be careful about when you're buying a stock, is the growth already built into the stock or is it not and it will actually grow with the earnings growth that happens in the future. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Main Street Wolf where we talk about investing, stocks, and once in a while, Kathy Wood. Thanks guys again for watching and have a great day.